Listen, we are back with another episode, and first of all, I want to shout out Fraternity Brand, my boy Burke, check him out on IG, The Fraternity Brand, and uh, get your own trims, custom jacket, and of course, the tea. Appreciate you for hooking me up, brother. Support the locals and the independent, right? Now... Sorry, I don't want to shortchange Burke for this. Um, he's doing a great job. Check out his page, man. That's all I can say to you. Check out his page. Um, check out his YouTube. He's doing amazing work for the people. And support him. You know what I mean? If you want something unique that nobody else has, that's the place you want to be. Fraternity brand, all right? Now, thank you for being here for another week. Another episode. This one is for any and everybody that, you know, uh, grew up in a challenging situation, uh, unique communities and so forth. I think you'll benefit from this. Um, I, I mean, it got me really thinking, right? This one, I had to really do some digging to get through this one because a few statements that, that, you know, I grew up with that kind of helped shape some of the mindsets that I had as a youngster, but they weren't the best, if you know what I mean. One of them that really stands out to me was product of my environment, right? And so this episode is speaking about environments, right? And how do we define environments? I think <clears throat> that's very important for us to know how we define environments, right? Because how you would define your environment is going to have an impact on the decisions that you make and how you navigate certain spaces when you're in them, right? This concept of environment is very interesting. Now, I'm speaking about if it's from the perspective of the average person, right? So, for example, where I grew up, <clears throat> like we said, like I said before, we believed in the idea that we were the products of our environments. Many people, I mean, to this day, continue to believe that, that mantra, right? It's unfortunate because it's not based on any real facts. I think it's it's based on individuality and, and how that individual feels from day to day or what they, they're going through. If they can't catch a break, then they believe that this is where they belong, right? They're rooted here and they can't change. They can't shift, right? And that that really got me thinking about this episode because I I beg to differ, and I often use myself as an example and so many um, people who made it out specific neighborhoods and ones that were very similar to mine. Right? So let, let's break this down a little bit. Traditionally, environments have been defined from a physical aspect or setting, right, in which people live. So when you think about that, the word environment means more than just the physical surroundings that we occupy, right? I believe it includes the experiences of all those who came before me or us, right? And the imprint that they have left, not just on me, but on you. And you got to think about that. Because those imprints are what we call today traditions, customs, and, you know, <clears throat> some might call it imperative aptitude, which is also known as influence. Right? So those before us, indirectly and directly, have left an imprint of what they experienced, what they endured, right, in our DNAs. So that really got me thinking now. <clears throat> If my ancestors or those before me in this neighborhood left something 
that is embedded in me, then that's pretty scary. I mean, it's very powerful, right? So that's that's something to consider, I think. Now, let's go back to environments. Environments, I think, can be described as geographical, right? Uh, I think it's also spiritual, right? What what you feel inside, how you feel. Um, and then obviously social, economical, right? Your status and how it impacts you and how you feel, which is spiritually again. And then you reflect, you know, you're reflective based on what's happening around you, your physical. So all those things I feel are, are connected. But um, a clear definition has to be made between what is around people and what people have, like as far as possessions and what they don't have. And finally, what is also within that group of people for them to believe this, this to be their truth or their, their reality, right? Um, but I think it's clear and easy for everyone to understand, you know, that what takes place around me or you, right, has the potential of influencing my decisions. Just as much as what is stored inside of me, right, as far as my knowledge, the ideas, my belief systems, prejudices that I might have, right? So all those things are going to have an impact on my decisions as well. So if my thoughts and my emotions and my feelings are impacted by my surroundings, my physical surroundings, then clearly my spirit is also impacted. And if my spirit is impacted, then that's going to influence my decisions, right? The actions that I take or don't take. So <clears throat> we need to we need to be aware of this. Like that means my environment is not just the room that I'm in or the spaces that I travel in. My environment is also what's in here because if what's in here is toxic, I can only imagine, right? What decisions I'm going to make and, and how that's going to impact my future. So it's definitely worth considering. Um, Let's see if we can dive a little bit deeper with this <clears throat> for better understanding of, of what's taking place in our environment today. We must, I believe we must undergo um, some sort of investigation, right? We have to understand our, our past conditions, those before us um, or things that we've done in the past experiences that we've gone through in the past, you know, conditions that we lived in, that we grew up in, and, and how did they influence our mental, right, today? Because we don't think it's having an impact, the physical surroundings. We also don't think the psychological abuse or, or experiences or challenges that we endured are going to have an impact on us today because they were many years back. But clearly studies are showing that it's not true, right? So... If my mental and my environment can influence me today in so many different ways, then I should, I should, I really should consider where I spend most of my time, right? What spaces am I often in? Who is in that space? The energy in that space is going to have an impact. But how often do we consider these things? We just kind of go where the energy takes us or where the flow is or where the crowd is or where my favorite people are. But those spaces may not necessarily be what's right for you in order for you to progress in the direction that you want to. Right. But look at your own history and, and um, process this, this idea, this concept, because those historic historical instances, right, for example, are an essential part of who you are. 
it's an essential part of the group of people who share that same space you occupy. So in that neighborhood that you grew up in, those people that live there with you, they're sharing those same historical instances that that community or that environment, you know, has has harbored. Now, this means that we must acknowledge our past. Learn, right, what we must from it. Like everything that you need to know from your past or that environment, you need to know what it's gone through, why it has the label that it has, um, and what that label does to the people that live in that neighborhood. Because if you don't know the past, you can't understand why you are where you are, therefore you can't evolve and move forward. Right? And ultimately what happens is the legacy, whatever legacy it is that you are supposed to set, is going to die with you in that same neighborhood. And that's that's pretty scary. Um, people are not blank pieces of paper. And, and this is just me using like a, a pretty simple artist analogy here. A blank sheet of paper allows you to put whatever it is that you want on it as an artist or a creative or a writer, right? But people are not that. We don't just take a blank sheet and start fresh. And if we make a mistake, we just say, ah, crumble it and throw it away and start a new one. So people are not blank pieces of paper, right? And for the simple fact that our stories doesn't begin from the moment we are born. Our story began way before we were conceived. The two adults who decided to come together and make you know us exist, guess what? They had a history before they came together. And that history is going to get traveled, it's going to get passed down to you through the genes and, and everything else. How you know your mother carried you was she a smoker? Was she a drinker? Was she an addict? Was she healthy? Was she not healthy? Did she already have health conditions? And those things get passed down. Right? But back to that analogy, you know, unlike paper and pencil, our history isn't recorded, erased, and rewritten in this manner. Like You don't just say, ah, no, I don't like that line. Let me scratch it out and, and put a new one on. That's not how we are, right? Because you, you can't erase what you can't see, and that's the history before you came. You understand what I mean? Like, this is the part of your story that is tucked deep, deep in the depths of a person's soul. It's the history you didn't personally experience, but it resonates with you every time it, it flares up or it pops up or someone triggers you that it reminds you of, of that history, right? For a lot of people of color, it's, you know, um, racism, uh, it's slavery, it's, it's how people were treated in, in refugee camps, is civil wars, is so many different things, right? And, and you are living here, you may have not gone through that, but you know your parents did and you know your grandparents did, and so it resonates with you. When someone says a word that triggers you because of what that history means to you, you are now engaged in a conversation or a situation that is, is, can be damaging. Right? And that's the power of just environments. And history is a part of your environment. So... These are traumas, right? Or successes or experiences of our ancestors that to this day, a lot of us defend it with our lives. But we can never articulate why we feel these feelings. You, you get what I'm saying? Like it's, it's not even our feelings, but we are ready to die for them. It's not our experience, but we're ready to put our lives on the line for them 
And even though our intentions are not literally to give my life up, but in a scenario or in a situation where, you know, conflict escalates, people's lives are often taken without regard. Like you're taking someone else's life or hurting someone or making, you know, shaming someone and you have no idea why sometimes how your history or someone else's experiences influence you to make that decision. And often these decisions are permanent, like you can't reverse it if you wanted to. You know, so I, I say these are traces of our ancestors experiences, right? And they always, they will always remain in the next generation, whether they like it or not. For, for some people who are able to suppress it for as long as they, they can or as long as they live, right? And others can't. It's right on the forefront. So they're ready to do whatever they need to do to defend something that they didn't actually experience. But the idea of somebody they knew or loved going through that and now you are either poking at it or poking fun at it triggers them, right? And... And it's crazy because although we don't live in the past, the past resides in us. Right? And that's some food for thought right there. Like, think about that. You did not experience the past that you were fighting for today. And that's simply because the past has trickled down into some res residence, re residue of the past in you. And that's why you're fighting for what you think you should be fighting for. And I'm not saying for you not to fight for it. I'm just saying for you to think about it before you start putting your life on the line for it. Right? And I think we are indirectly, right? We are byproducts of our environments and not the products of our environments. The things that take place around us and with us contribute to the shaping, you know, um, that individuals become. So it, it, it's just one of those things that blew my mind when I started to kind of go down this rabbit hole for myself. And like, think about this. Imagine we did a, a social experiment, right? The two individuals. They live in different places on the planet. So person A lives in a rural community of just five people. It's a bit of an extreme, but just follow me. Right? And you can kind of figure it out on your own or, or create your own scenarios with similar extremes and then see if you get a different result. But person A lives in a rural community of five people and person B lives in a metropolis, right, of thousands of people from all walks of life, right? Different cultures, different backgrounds, different religions, beliefs, and all that stuff, right? That's person B's experience. Whereas person A is only five, is very limited, right? All five might be of the same religion, the same culture, whatever the situation is, but it's very limited. Now, person B would be exposed to far more unique experiences for obvious reasons, right? Right? They'll be exposed to more experiences, different ideas, different cultures, right? Compared to person A. Because fact remains the fact. The more people, right, with different experiences, knowledge, and, call, uh, and culture a person interacts with throughout their whole, you know, life lifeline or lifetime, the better or the greater the chances of them becoming successful in life, however they define that. They, they will just be far more enriched than the person who only has five people to interact and engage with, right? You'll be limited. So imagine you pluck that person A and pluck him into the world of person B. It'll take them a while to, to adjust. In fact, they will feel so out of place that they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. It'd be overwhelming, Right. But when you restrict yourself to the same people that you went to school with, for example, or with the neighborhood that you grew up in, 
right? You limit your chances of being exposed to different opportunities. And I wish I was making that up. Like, I really do. I wish I was making that up. But think about that. You hung out with the same people next door to you. You saw the same things, the same situations, um, traumas, and, and limited opportunity because you never left. You never left. What does that sound like to you? Prison. Jail, whatever you want to call it. Detention, juvenile. Because you're exposed to the same things, nothing new. That means no idea is going to be generated amongst you guys. You're going to share the same perspective on a lot of things because you're limited to that environment. You're limited to each other. You're limited to the resources. Right? You can't afford to look at the world through your, your bedroom window and question why other people have more opportunities than you. You get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> let me leave you with this one here for that, that, that portion there. Like, in the words of one of the hip-hop's greatest groups, Outkast. You need to get up, get out, and get something. If you're not sure, look it up, right? That's from that album. Um, uh, what is it? Cadillac. Oh, my gosh. Cadillac something funky music. It's a great album. One of my favorites, right? Because if you don't, otherwise, like, life will just simply pass you by and you, you wouldn't even realize it. Before you know it, you're that 50-year-old who, you know, grew up in the same apartment, saw the same people, and did the same things, but screamed every single day that you had the opportunity that life sucked. Or the system was against me, or I didn't get an opportunity because I, I grew up here. No, the opportunity didn't come to where you're living. You have to go and get the opportunity, create the opportunity. You can't stay where you are and expect it to come to you, right? And if it's a toxic environment, guess what? The opportunity doesn't want to be around toxic, toxicity. So it ain't coming. You have to go to it, right? Our environments are constantly impacting us by the way, in two ways, right? When you think it's not, but it is, right? It facilitates or discourages our engagement with other people. So depending on where I grew up, I might have this mentality of, nah, don't mess with that person. Why? Because he's a nerd or she's a nerd. Or they live uptown. They, they could never understand me. They don't get me. They're not from where I'm from. They don't know what I have to go through. So these are the limitations, right, that we set. Which means we took away the opportunity to actually have a conversation with that person. Because they're so different, we didn't even entertain the idea. You know what I mean? And that's where people limit themselves. Right? So... The environment forces us to choose an action, whether we do something or we don't do anything at all. And that's what your environment is going to do for you. Okay? Think about this example. Imagine like a dirty apartment with leftover food containers, dirty laundry and roaches, right? And all those things that you can envision. That apartment encourages the guests, the people who come over, to not remove their shoes <laughs> when they visit, right? Or it may even influence them to add more trash to the apartment because they figure whoever is living here does not care. So that's the mentality. And they're okay with that. That's what that apartment is going to right, encourage. But on the flip side, a clean apartment a clean apartment will encourage guests to ensure, right, that the space remains tidy. It may even remind others, you know, to sustain cleansiness in the, in the place. 
So you walk into a space, spick and span, you're going to come with the mentality of, ooh, I don't even want to touch anything. I might, you know, make it messy because it's so clean. You want to keep it that way. It encourages you to keep it that way. Whereas the dirty one encourages you to continue to pile it on. Right? A basketball team, for example, now, of, of young men ages 17 years, they might develop the attitude or the mindset of, I don't care. Right? Now, that attitude could be coming from the captain of that team or the, the most influential person of that team. And that attitude might be displayed towards the coach and even towards the rest of the team. But the captain, right, who has this attitude can influence the rest of the teammates to behave in the same manner if the coach doesn't address that behavior. Like, I'm talking immediately. Right? The minute you let it slide, it becomes a part of the culture. So, if that coach doesn't address it immediately, now you got a problem. Now, that same captain can have a positive influence on his team if he chooses. And that's what's important here. That's key. That's a choice. Right? The captain's internal you know, environment, his spirit, must be healthy in order for him to positively influence other, other people externally, right? outside of him. So, if my inside, my spirit is tainted and it's not clean, it's not healthy, it's not positive, it's not for making others better or seeing others prosper, then I'm going to just work on tearing others down because that's the energy that I have internally, in my spirit, right? And this is important because most of what we expect of others, right, most of what we expect are our own projections and, and reflections of how we feel, about ourselves. It's it's true. It's true that we can't always choose our environments. But our, our environments will always choose us. And sometimes it goes to the extent and the extreme of actually using us. Right? So your environment may use you if you allow it. Or you can choose a different environment that you can use to benefit you. Okay? Because we have the ability to choose or decide the level of impact we allow our environments to have on our, our overall decisions. And that's, that's very important. Knowing that you decide. Now, I guess the question I'm posing is, which environment will you listen to as an individual? Are you going to listen to that internal one, the one around you, which is the external? Or are you going to seek a new physical environment by relocating? The choice is all yours. We can choose to continue speaking to people we keep around us who don't listen, right? Or choose to stop speaking to those people and start observing their actions. That's for us to decide. But we can't hate the players on our team, right? Now, the players are the people that we keep around us regularly, right? And we can't hate the coaches on our, our bench either. The coaches are the people that we respect and, and listen to for, for guidance who have become yes men and women over a period of time, right? So I guess what I'm saying is they kind of tend to lose their value over time as you evolve. However, we can blame the GM <laughs> and the, the person that's in the mirror is the general manager, who's responsible for the players and the coach. And guess who the GM is in every situation that you're going to encounter? You. 
you decide who stays or leaves on your team, in your organization. Right? But be sure to always check your environments and feed them with all the nutrients that they need. Water it with plenty of positive self-talk and an abundance of positive mentors, role players who will provide all the sunshine throughout your journey. That's what you need. And always remain the soul which resides deep within the soil. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness.